Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to the webinar today. Uh, we have a talk today on the topic of uh, tracking the footprint of research data across infrastructures using the uh, Research Graph API. The speakers today are Dr. Ben uh, Evans from NCI, Associate Director of NCI, and Dr. Jim Wang, uh, who's a collection manager in uh, NCI. Uh, so with that introduction, I actually hand over the talk to uh, Ben for starting the talk. So we're going to be talking about work that's going on to help track um, research data and how it's used in a, in a broader setting. I should mention NCI's got a lot of um, partners uh, as a part of this that have been backing and worked with us in this, uh, including from NCRIS and Bureau of Meteorology, uh, Geoscience Australia, uh, CSIRO, the ANU, and, and a host of other partners and collaborators, uh, including ANS uh, in particular for, for this uh, work. So some of the open questions, motivating questions um, beyond just getting data management in place is, so say you publish data and data sets is, how is the research community actually connecting with that data? You know, after you put it into a public arena, they could be connecting with it in various ways and making use. So how do you track that? And also, how do you track the impact of that investment of that research data for other derived um, products? you know, downstream. So that, that's a challenging sort of question that you can't answer fully with inside of a single centre. You, you, you're really into an international sort of world and, uh, and that, that motivated us a lot to be working on this particular project, which has uh, part of the solution. So um, I should say that the standing of, of, uh, of this work and this piece of infrastructure that we'll be going through on Research Graph uh, started with a, with a fairly small partnership, but now it's grown uh, quite a bit and RDA, um, Research uh, Data Alliance, have picked it up uh, as um, uh, this registry interoperability working group and it's got a number of players. You can see some of the players. Um, who've um, been strongly supporting this work over a period of time uh, listed there. And you can, you can follow that link on RD uh, Alliance website to, to track this. But furthermore, now um, really through, through Amir's good work and others, the European Commission have picked this up and said, yes, this needs to now be pushed into an ICT specification. So all that is to say that this work is now on a, on a pretty strong um, pathway and uh, and well worth um, paying attention to now uh, as it goes forward. So there's there's four types of what we call nodes in these uh, in this graph network um, when you're publishing data and using data. So one is a the researcher, um, one's a data set, one's publication, one's grants. There could be other nodes as well, but the the, the status of these whole graphs at the moment is basically built up of those. Uh, fundamental areas. And when we get down to it in, inside of the tool, you can see the attributes through that graphic on the right hand side. Uh, research is always in green and data sets um, are in, uh, in orange, publications blue and grants in yellow. Uh, and you can see some of the attributes that are, that are listed there and we'll talk about that. Um, the, the other thing is that this um, graph network that's been built up understands um, very well-known metadata standards like ISO 19115 for that's geospatial uh, data, a lot of geospatial data fits into that, but also things like uh, RIFCS that's used in the librarian world and inside of uh, Research Data Australia, if you know that catalogue, uses uh, RIFCS and Mark 21 and, and there are others uh, as well. So just to say, you know, that, that this, uh, this graph system is, is already supporting the, that framework. Uh, for NCI, um, we uh, make a number of major national reference data sets um, available on NCI. We've curated them and, and put them into a certain form. Uh, they come from our, uh, in principle, from a lot of the science agencies, um, being Bureau of Meteorology and Geoscience Australia and so forth. Also, uh, sometimes from, from our research community itself, but they've They've been classified as really the major national reference collections um, that are associated with NCI. And you, can, you can see some of the, 
the things listed there, climate, weather and satellite imagery, bathymetry elevation, you know, all of these sort of geo, you know, earth systems, geospatial uh, uh, data in particular. Um, as an example of a data set um, now is, uh, so we, we've got this thing called Blue Link Reanalysis uh, data set. And, you know, on the left hand side, I'll give you a little a summary of what it is. Um, uh, on the right hand side, you, you, many people are familiar and work with catalogue systems. So, you know, we're using a geo network as part of our core um, catalogue system. And so you get, you know, the title. So that's the blue, you can see on the right hand side, it's circled there and an abstract about it. Uh, you can see points of contact. So this is all part of this ISO 19115 standard. That's how all of this is recorded, how to get hold of that, that data. So the question that you've got of something like this is what, what researchers are working on that or related data sets, how they're publishing, is there anything else connected to it? Um, and so you end up with this little graph of, uh, of stuff. And, and just down on the bottom right hand side here, just off this sort of basic diagram here, you can see Peter Oak, who's the main contact for that data set, is somehow associated with this um, brand, um, Blue Link Reanalysis uh, data set. So they're somehow associated with that, even off our local information. So you can find out a little bit more about Peter. Um, you know, and we have other information systems that have got um, Peter's details, so what project he's working on, publications, you know, somehow uh, linked to him, you know, his contact detail and a, and a pretty picture there of, of um, Peter looking very sprightly. Um, and so we have that information in NCI. And so on the left hand side in this sort of dotted line that you can see with the NCI logo around it, we know a fair bit about Peter. That's the number one with the, with the green, there he is. And there, there he is with his, you know, as a researcher and an identity and attributes inside of our, our local information. And we know various things about data sets that, that Peter is associated with. But there's other things that live outside of NCI. Um, and in particular, on the right hand side there, you can say out in the real world, or out in the external world, Peter Oak has an what's called an ORCID ID, and many of you know this, and inside of, uh, associated with his ORCID ID, we know things about his publication uh, record. And so the, the trick for all of this stuff is to try and associate our internal information to the external information. And there's a number of steps that we go through here. You know, for number one, let's have the information uh, recorded inside of a little graph that we'll go through in a second. Then we can augment the graph um, with um, how it gets um, connected up with the ORCID ID. Um, and then we can find out further information in particular um, about other external records like his publication record. So almost sort of re-describing uh, um, this same, same status sort of in a fundamental sort of way, what we do is we've got a geo network catalog with a, with a lot of this information. Um, that is via the utilities in, uh, in the research um, graph system, harvests that and puts it into a Neo4j, which is a type of a graph database, just the one that, that we happen to be using for this. Um, that that Neo4j is just hosted inside of the cloud. That ha has our information, it's just a re recasting of the local information and put inside of this, this system. And then go out, what we do is go out into the research a broader research graph on the uh, outside world and we augment then the local graph database with that extra information. And then we can visualise it in various ways. And so um, that's sort of what this image, and there's a, there is a graphical tool that comes along with this to start seeing a whole bunch of connected things to do with this um, data that can be start to exploited, start to be exploited. So if we, uh, if we just had the local information of various data sets, then all we would have is the left hand side of this. Through that extra augmentation going and querying in the international um, research graph and then augmenting for the local data, we end up with a much richer set of uh, information about, about what each of the individual data sets and researchers and what they're doing and their associations. So that's pretty simply what's going on. Um, the research graph uh, system that's been put in place really by, by the partners and particularly Amir sort of driving this um, 
you know, interoperates with a whole bunch of different services. Uh, Orchid, Datasite, Scolix has, has come on board, um, and other major data centres like Gasis and so on and so forth. So there's a there's a list there and a growing list of um, of information being put into the to an interoperable graph system. And so now there's sort of a richer and deeper details that we can start harvesting. And uh, and there's actually we did sort of the simplest augmentation um, as the description on those previous page, but actually you can run several levels of augmentation and, um, you know, we're still sort of, I guess, trying to explore what's the best way of, um, of augmenting the data um, of what are the questions that we're trying to, to face. So look, I'm going to hand over now to Jingbo, who's going to take us a little bit more through some of the details of, of Research Graph and where it's going. Thank you, Ben. Oh, hi. Um, from the this point of time, I'm going to go through a couple of slides in the next 10 minutes or so to demonstrate how did we implement the research graph pipeline and also report what are we currently working on, plus some future um, plans uh, to going forward. So in this slide, uh, it just show you what is the input and what is the output. The input is NCI's metadata database, as you see in the previous slides by Ben, uh, our data set available in geo network in various format, it could be CSV or XML or JSON. They are the input so that Jenkins server take that input from the GitHub and build the NCI graph. So the output will be NCI graph. On the right hand side, the bottom screenshot just show you how easy to maintain and update the database with only one click of the button. The five different modules in green color shows you the step by step uh, inside of the Jenkins server to build the NCI graph and also uh, augmentation with other database such as the Deal uh, Orchid. So the so what we get eventually is an NCI graph ML. There are different ways to visualize the graph. One way which was not mm, presented here is we can use the Gaffey software to visualize. But more um, popular way would be we present our graph in a web-based format. So if you um, click that link or type this link in your browser, you can actually see this is online. And I'm going to show you three, three screenshots on this web page, followed by a little live demo afterwards. And uh, basically, this is the interesting part. Once we get the graph, and we're going to analyze the graph and try to um, tell the story from the graph. And the first screenshot just really give you an overview of how many publications in our augmented graph and how many data sets and how many researchers here. I'm going to run a little live demo to repeat the story that Ben told you about Peter Oak. And if you type this uh, researchgraph.org slash NCI. All right. In the web browser, you can see a, um, a web page about NCI's graph and click that orange button. It will open a new tab to show the graph. This is the actual graph look like. And if I find Peter Oak as a researcher and click that one, it only show the connection with this researcher. Uh, the color code of the dot is the, this is the data set, which is the blue link reanalysis data associated with Peter Oak. And if you look, notice there is another green dot over here. And this is the augmented part from the orchid. And the blue dot represents the publication which associated with this researcher. So this really demonstrates that through the augmentation, our own database with the data set and researcher are connected to the rest of the world. Let me go back to my presentation again. And um, um, I should say that we did play around with the different analytics, and this is the most interesting part. And we demonstrate a few cases that we think people are interested. For example, what is the most publication related to a researcher? And this researcher is always identified with the docket ID. 
and also um, which researcher has the most data set associated with him, with his affiliation. And on the right hand side, if you are still with the web browser, you can actually put your mouse onto some of the name. It will only show the connections between this researcher and other researchers. So it's a more like an interactive mode. Um, I should also say that this augmentation is still working in progress. It means that we can augment with other databases, such as um, um, data sites uh, or other European data repository, and we can actually make our graph bigger and bigger. The, the last screenshot is just showing the number of publications along, uh, along the year. And I, as I said, this is not a static uh, uh, graph because we can always augment with other database and we can introduce more publication if it is not in the ORCID database. So behind the scene, we use the Jupyter Notebook to generate this web interactive format. And uh, we plan to um, play around more by providing maybe predefined a query so that people can put the person's name on ORCID to find out, oh, what is the connection uh, between this researcher and the publication and the data set and in the future even the grants if it's available in our data in our database. So next is um, we think the research graph can be useful for a number of different group of people and we think also provide a research graph in a linked data format would be benefit ben would be beneficial for people who want to um, to work with the um, more machine searchable and actionable approach. So what we've done is we did a bit of proof concept work by extending our current format of the research graph in JSON to JSON-LD using schema.org to enhance the semantic feature of the research graph. And we have a publication last year talking about the approach and the ideas. So the reference is at the bottom of the page of the slide. The other thing is, um, once we build the research graph, there are a lot of interesting analysis that we can do. So we are currently exploring the new ways of analyzing the information in the research graph and trying to pick up the good stories about what research graph can tell us. The other thing is, um, because we are the national data repository, um, we actually encourage people to do the cross-disciplinary research based on our high-performance platform. If we can demonstrate the value of uh, cross-disciplinary research by showing that, oh, when different type of data are available on the same platform, more research, more publication, and more funding was granted, it will be um, quite good to demonstrate the impact of, um, of, of our data management practice. So in summary, um, I think research graph really mean a couple of things for different group of user. For example, for a user itself uh, of the data repository, they can understand the dynamic research integration through this ana analytics. Um, I remember when some researcher submit an ARC grant, they sometimes show their publication citation along the year being increasingly um, better and better. But with the research graph, they can actually show more information, not just the publication, but also their contribution of the data set and their award on other additional funding using the research graph. For a higher level ex executive and board in, in the, as a data repository, and we can demonstrate the value of our good data management practice and provide the interoperability of the data services. Through these more advanced services, we also advance the science research by having more publication and more impact in the matrix. And finally, for the funding body, um, things in they invited, uh, invested a good amount of money for the data repository, we can demonstrate the impact of the investment on the data repository by showing um, the quantity, 
quantitative analysis of the impact matrix within the research community. So if you wanted to learn more about the graph, we have the GitHub source code and we also have the interactive demo of the graph. And uh, there is a Twitter on also if you wanted to socialize it. I think that's it. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks Jingbo. I'd like to thank uh, Ben and Jingbo for uh, giving this talk and thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Thank you.